grits. If you're from the South, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I was raised on them all my life for breakfast. But I mean, now you know, they do them all, all kinds of ways now. Uh, shrimp and grits, cheese grits. They put them with all kinds of things, lunch, supper, dinner, and all. Well, the other day, me and Baby Doll were in uh, St. Augustine, Florida at a restaurant, and they offered a blackened fish on a grit cake. Well, we loved them. So since we've been home, I've been working on it. And I've got two or three versions that I, I, I'm going to show you. And uh, I'm going to blacken some tilapia to put on there, but mainly the show is going to be pretty much about the grit cakes. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's blacken some fish and put it on a grit cake. All right, well, I'm assuming I have led in to this segment of the video of where I'm making one of the uh, corn grit cakes. And uh, this is like the fourth version I've done. And this time I'm going to use uh, Bob's Red Mill, uh, the version he has on his website, which is pretty much six cups of water, uh, two cups of uh, polenta or uh, white corn grits, two cups of uh, uh, cheddar cheese, and uh, some butter. And that's optional, I think. And then a little bit of salt. But... Long story short, it's going. I've got, like I said, I've got several. Uh, we're going to do this one like this. This is what they recommend here, I think. Uh, something about a uh, a loaf pan. That's what we're going to do it in, whether they do or not. We're going to do it in this Ninja loaf pan. And uh, I'll be honest with you, this right here would work well too. This is a Pyrex round dish, and that that way you could kind of cut it like cornbread or something, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with this. And I've got others that are in sheet pans that I'll be able to show you in a minute that uh, uh, they work well, and there's nothing wrong with them, but I do like this idea. So all I'm going to do is take the directions off the back. I mean, i got to go, I'm changing the ratios and all, but what they say right here is uh, 10 minutes of high pressure and then 15 minutes of a natural release. So all I'm going to do is put six cups of water, two cups of grits, let that cook, and then I'll add a little bit of butter and these two cups of cheese. And I'll bring you back before that happens. So anyhow, that's on their website. I'm, I'm not affiliated, as always, with nobody, no way, shape, form, or fashion. But anyhow, that's on their website right there if you need it. So I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so right quick, the two cups of Bob's Red Mill grits are in there and six cups of water that I measured all that out. Now, you do want to whisk it around real well, and you may even still get a lump or two, but I mean, you're making grit cakes. It, it's not a big deal. It, it's really not, and when you put it into a cake, uh, it's not even noticeable, but you, you may get them. That's my point. And now, the... Uh, the lid is on. We're going to hit power. You know something? Yeah, everything's good. <laughs> Making sure that gasket was on there. <laughs> Didn't feel like it was. Going to pressure on high for, uh, what did I say, uh, 10 minutes, right? Yeah, so 10 minutes. It's already there. We'll hit start. Make sure it is sealed. It is. And uh, I'll be right back when that happens. Well, actually, we're going to let that uh, do the complete 10 minute cook and then the 15 minute natural release. I'll see y'all then. Okay, I, I did want to show a couple of other versions of what I've done so far. And this is, this is a nine by 13 pan and that is a one cup of grits and the same liquid ratios we're using tonight. But you can see it was a little thin for my liking. There was nothing wrong with the flavor of it. It, it worked great. It just was a little thin. It didn't didn't get as thick as I like. Well, now this is the pan out of my Ninja Foodie. And uh, what I did here was I used two cups of grits and it also has some cheese. And uh, I've actually used, I used bone broth in this one from Costco. And then in this one, I used uh, this chicken broth from... Uh, uh, Ingles. They, they, they both work. It all works. You can use water. You can use a lot of things, but this is tonight I'm using water because that's what they called for. But my opinion, this right here was a, a lot better thickness. It just worked better 
or whatever you're going to do with it. And like I said, the, the, the grit cake, in my opinion, is the star of the show tonight. I mean, the whatever I'm, whatever fish, most likely tilapia, I'm going to cook, it'll work really, really well. But so will shrimp, blackened shrimp, or just country ham, or uh, collard greens. I mean, there's a million things you can put on grit cakes. They, they are really, really good. I'll tell you something else you can do with them. Just like this right here. All that is, is one of those grit cakes, 450 degrees for about eight minutes after I, after it had been in the refrigerator overnight. And then I put a little bit of salt, and if I can find it right here, and then uh, some of my balsamic vinegar. It, it's excellent. It's really, really good. But I'll get off of that. We're gonna let that go for about 12 more minutes. We'll release the pressure. We'll get it, we'll uh, open the lid and get it in here or and let it cool overnight. So I'll be back. Okay, so the 15 minutes of natural release has happened. We're gonna see how much uh, pressure's left. Whoops. And just a little bit. So I'll let that bleed down and we'll open it up and stir it up a little bit. Okay, there went the pen right quick. We'll open it up and mix it up. I'll show you what it looks like because it's kind of alarming sometimes. You think it needs something else. It doesn't. It, it just needs stirring. That's all. You just got to mix up the liquid and all, and it will all become grits. So that's what I'm going to do for a few minutes, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I did put the three tablespoons of unsalted butter, and then I put just a, a pinch or two of salt. There's, you know, I didn't measure it, but I did. But the three tablespoons of butter, I, of unsalted butter, by the way, I put in. And we're about to put it in this loaf pan. And if we were to have anything left, we're going to put it in that other thing. But we're going to see what we got right here. And I'm going to make sure you can see what I'm doing. And here we go. I do have this. I've got some uh, avocado oil in this pan so i really do hope it's not going to stick that's going to be uh disheartening <laughs> i don't want it to stick but i probably should maybe i should have rubbed it with butter but i didn't i used avocado oil so we're going to get that shook back just a little bit because there's still quite a bit in there i just want to see what it looks like and uh i want to bounce this on this stainless of the sink right here and we're going to add just a little bit more. If I can get it to cooperate. Well, easier said than done. But, hey, maybe I'll come back in just a minute. I'm just going to get this right here to the level I want it. And if anything's left, I'm going to put it in that round. Uh, this right here. I've already got it greased down. But I don't, I don't think there's going to be enough. But... Anyhow, I'm going to bounce that down. And just so you'll know, there's what we're going to be trying to get out tomorrow night. <laughs> so, and then I'm going to see what I can get out of here. I'll be back. Okay, just, just for the record, I didn't, I wanted to put some in here. I think that would make a neat mold also. But th the two cups work perfect right here. It, it is hot. <laughs> but it, it worked really well. And I'm going to put that in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow night, hopefully it's going to come out and quite honestly that will make a beautiful uh, like cutting pound cake <laughs> that's what it'd be like and the grits they i have not tasted them i will in this minute i guarantee you but they look excellent let's see and they are man they are perfectly cooked just like a pressure cooker does to them every time anyhow see y'all tomorrow all right, it is the next night, and uh, I thought I would show you how well it does, and we can watch it, you know, together. This is the one, the latest one I've done, which I think I'm going to like the best. And I can see it's a little turned loose. Now, there's some liquid that I may have to pour off just a little bit. I'm going to right there in the sink. But then hopefully that uh, loaf pan is going to turn loose of my grit cake. And uh, we'll, we'll, let's just see. 
Mm, there it goes. I was fixing to uh, say it wasn't. <laughs> it's even got the ninja on the bottom, if you can see it right there. It's there. I don't know if you can see it. But I think, I'll, I'll say this. This is the restaurant. Well, we were in St. Augustine. I've got on a St. Augustine shirt. We were in St. Augustine when I ate my first grit cake a few months ago. I absolutely loved them. So did Baby Doll. And uh, I've been working on it off and on ever since. And you saw the other ones I got. But I think this is may have been their approach. I don't know that. And I did. I got that off of uh, the website I showed you last night. So there you go. You can see it. All you got to do now is slice it, like I said, pound cake. Just like a piece of pound cake. And, uh, and then heat it. And then put it with whatever whatever you want to put with your grit cakes. Now, it's, I, I was going to mention this before I dumped it out of the uh, the loaf pan, but if you noticed last night, I forgot to put the cheese in. But it's it's not a big deal. I do have some grit cakes with cheese in them, uh, but you can tell by looking that is nothing but grits, white grits, uh, and uh, I take my words. You can put a hundred different cheeses in here. You can do Gruyere, Gouda, cheddar, Parmesan. You know, but I did forget all of it in this, but I do have some with it, and I do like it with cheese. There's there's no doubt, but I like it like this right here, too. Some butter and heating it up, it'll be excellent. But anyhow, wanted to say that because I forgot to mention it before, <laughs> before I dumped it out. Okay, so a little explanation to do here. You can see there's the grit cake. Now, it's been a couple of nights. In fact, I did this about three nights ago. It's been in my refrigerator for about three nights. I'll also say you could definitely do it in the, this Ninja, the same thing I'm about to do in the oven. Now, I would say that uh, this rack right here came out of my Deluxe Ninja cooker, but I used my older 8-quart. But you can buy that same rack right here on Ninja's website, and I'm not sure you can see it, but go to ninjakitchen.com. It's 39 bucks, and then you would have two layers to do it pretty much exactly what I'm going to be doing in this oven. Now, I've already blackened one side of the fish. I'm trying to get all this kind of done in a hurry uh, where it won't take up so much time, but you can see by the imprint about how much blackened season I use and take my word I've been do, I've already used this more than once and I and I do like it now I've got other blackening seasons I use but I had never saw this Tony Sacheries until the other day at Walmart and I bought it and I and I like it now I mean it looks a lot like his other you got to kind of look for it but uh you could use that and in fact I probably will use this that on the grit cake and and this on the fish. But if you've got any seasonings you like, you know, by all means use them. But right here, and the reason I wanted to save that plate is so you can see it because on this black background, you would never know. It's not as easy to tell, but this is what I'm using. But you know your heat level. I ain't really got to tell all this. I'm just going to do that right quick. <laughs> now, the main part, what's coming? I'm going to... Slice these to whatever thickness you would want, you know, or, you know, that's all I got to say is pretty much. Now, you can see it's tapered on the end, so I'm going to square it up. And, and no good reason other than just to square it up. But look at there. I mean, it makes a grit cake that really, they, they are very good, y'all. It's something different, too, you know. I mean, you, you pick what thickness you want. And if you saw in those pans where I didn't like the thickness of the first one, because it was really thin with that one cup of grits. This right here, you can decide. And that right there is probably about what I would like. Now, I'm going to do two grit cakes for those two. And then this right here would be good for, uh, I don't, you know, I haven't researched freezing it or anything. But in other words, if you have more guests or different things you want to do, uh, you got it. So I ain't got to explain all that. I'm going to get this on the top rack and the grit cakes on the bottom rack. And uh, total disclosure, I have never... Now, although I've cooked many pieces of this this week, I just have not done this exact situation at the same time. But that's what we're doing. And uh, I'm going to get that in that oven and I'll be back. All right, here is the tilapia, and I have seasoned, obviously, the other side. And uh, by the way, I did spray uh, both of these pans with uh, avocado oil. But now, 
the grit cakes, I, I melted about a quarter stick of butter and uh, I have brushed both sides and also uh, I did sprinkle both sides or you can see about how much I used up with a uh, Sacherie's just Creole seasoning. So I'm going to put it on the bottom. This is the part I haven't ever tried at the same time, but we're, we're going to find out. The fish is on rack level number three, and uh, the grit cakes are on one. So all I'm really looking for the grit cakes is about, I don't know, 140, 150 or so. Same thing with the fish. But let's see. We're going to take that temp down to about... Uh, I've been doing them at 375 now. Again, I've never had the grit cakes in there, but I've been cooking them at 375. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to stick with. And we'll leave it at 15 minutes, and I'll do uh, temp checks along the way and see how we are. We're on air fry. We're off and running. I'll be back. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of temp check. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pull these all the way out. i got to look at those fish, too. But we're going to take a temp check. i got a feeling... The grit cakes. I mean, you can smell the butter and that uh, blackened seasoning. Yeah, we're 150, 155, 156. The grit cakes are good. I'm going to take a look at the temp on those fish. So y'all bear with me. <laughs> and we, you can see what time we're at it. We started at 15, so... I'm going to lift this right here out, right there. And I did drop one of these the other night, so I'm really a little more careful than I probably should be. We're going that thickest part. We are 147, 148. The fish and the grit cakes are ready. So I got to get a, I'm going to get those on the plate. I don't want to close that back, or I can, and then just hit stop. But I'm going to get them on the plate, and I'll be back. All right, right here is the finished product, and you can see I've already been in it a little bit, but take my word, this tilapia works excellent. It's a great, it's a really good fish. It's not that expensive, and hey, I love it. It's a white, flaky fish, and uh, I'm sure we'll work with a lot of things, but it works really well with Sachery, uh, Tony Sachery's blackening season. And it didn't, the uh, grit cakes, you can see I've already tasted those, but uh, the Creole, it does work. There's no doubt, but take my word, the star of the show, this right here, you can put with a lot of different things, as I've said. Uh, you, you may not think you like grits, or if you want to call them polenta, like they do in Italy, well, uh, if you try them, you will. It, it, whether you make a grit cake out of them or just make grits or polenta, it all works, and uh, I think you'll be impressed with the recipe. I think these grit cakes will go with a lot of things, and I do need to research whether I can freeze that uh, loaf or not because, you know, unless you're going to serve a lot, it is quite, well, it's not that big a deal because it's not a lot of money. <laughs> uh, two cups of grits is, is pretty cheap, but this all worked real well with it. I'll say that. The... Uh, the in fact, Bob's Red Mill, his, his grits and all, I used his uh, multi-cooker recipe, which I love when people do that because multi-cooker means ninja foodie or instant pot, whatever you want to call it. And then he also, I also used his recipe from the website for that uh, grit cake. I'll get off that. I love y'all all. Come back to see me. Y'all have a good night and uh, cook you some til blackened tilapia and some grit cakes.